If you're looking to display information side by side in a Word document, to me, tables are just the ideal tool for that. Here are seven tips to make tables easier for you to work with. This video was sponsored by my Basic Word Skills for Legal Professionals course. For more information, click the link above or in the description below. Hi, I'm Deborah Savager with LegalOfficeGuru.com, your resource for using Microsoft Office in a legal practice context. And in the ongoing upgrade that I've got going with my Basic Word Skills for Legal Professionals course, I've been reviewing the lessons on tables, upgrading the videos, upgrading the instructions and the screenshots and whatnot. And that kind of got me to thinking about the ways that I use tables on a daily basis. So I've come up with seven tips to make tables easier for you to work with. Now, if you look down in the description below this video, you'll be able to jump to a particular tip by clicking on the link. But the first one I'm going to start with is repeating header rows. If you've got a table in your document that spans across more than one page, you've probably seen this happen. The rows on the second and subsequent pages don't have a header, so you have a hard time telling one column from another. Fortunately, this is easy to fix. Just hover your mouse just to the left of the row or rows you want repeated on every page, then click to select that row or rows. You'll see two more contextual tabs pop up above the ribbon on the far right, Table Design and Layout. Click on the Layout tab, then in the Data Command Group, click Repeat Header Rows. That's it. That row or rows will repeat at the top of the table on every page. You've probably also noticed that if a table row on the bottom of a page is a bit too large vertically to fit on that page, Word will insert a soft page break right in the middle of the row. This can be really annoying, particularly if you've got information in multiple columns that really needs to be kept together to make sense. Word by default allows rows to break across page breaks, but you can turn that setting off by selecting the entire table with the crossbar that appears when you hover over the top left-hand corner. Then go to the Contextual Table Layout tab, click on Properties on the left, then go to the Row tab in the Table Properties dialog box and uncheck the box next to Allow Row to Break Across Pages. That will reset that setting for your entire table. Although if you skip the Select Entire Table step, it will only reset that setting for the row your cursor happens to be sitting in. If your table rows need numbers, then here's an easy way to get the rows to number themselves. Click your cursor into the first cell that will need a number, then go to the Home tab, and in the Paragraph command group, Click the Single Level Paragraph Numbering drop-down and pick the number format you want. The number will likely be indented, which you may not want. That's fixable. Just right-click on the number and choose Adjust List Indents from the menu that pops up. Put zeros in the Number Position and Text Indent fields and choose Nothing in the Follow Number With drop-down. Then click OK. Now when you use the Tab key to add another row, it'll automatically number. If you need to insert that numbering scheme into some other unnumbered rows, use the Format Painter. Click inside the cell that has the first number, Double-click the Format Painter to make it persistent, then click into each cell that needs a number. Once you're done numbering, press the Escape key to turn Format Painter off. Have you created a table type you'd love to be able to use in the future? Save it as a building block so you can drop it into any document from the Insert Table menu. Once you've gotten your table formatted to your exacting specifications, 
Select it with the crossbar at the top left corner of the table. Then go to the Insert tab, Table, Quick Tables, Save Selection to Quick Tables Gallery. You'll get the Create New Building Block dialog box. Name it something you'll remember. Then you can put it into a category to organize it. I created an At DES category to store all of my custom building blocks so they'll always appear at the top of the list. And you can even store it within a specific template or just store it within the default building blocks template as appropriate. Now, anytime you need that table again in a document, you go to the Insert tab, Table, Quick Tables, and there's your table. By default, tables offer a minimum of space between entries, but if you find that a little cramped, you can control it. Put your cursor somewhere inside your table, and you'll see the Table Design and Layout contextual tabs pop up. Choose the Layout tab on the right and click Cell Margins. The Table Options dialog box that pops up allows you to reset top, bottom, left, and right margins for every cell in the table simultaneously. Now your text has a little more breathing room. If you want to reset the margins for one particular cell or range of cells you've selected, go to Table Properties and click on the Cell tab. Click Options and uncheck the box next to Same as Whole Table. Then you can reset the margins for just the cell or cells you want. Then click OK and OK again. By the way, this trick comes in really handy when you're working with labels in Word, particularly if you find your text is sitting uncomfortably close to the top margin. Just reset that top margin to move your text down a bit. One default setting I personally find really annoying is a table column resizing itself if I happen to paste in a text that's too long to fit onto a single line in the cell. That's why I routinely turn that setting off so I can manually control my column size. To do that, select the entire table by hovering over the top left hand corner of the table and clicking the crosshair that appears or using the Select Table button in the Layout tab. Either way, then go to Properties, and on the Table tab of the Table Properties dialog box, click Options, and in the Table Options dialog box, uncheck the box next to Automatically Resize to Fit Contents then click OK, and OK again. Now you have total control over the sizing of your column. If you're in the last cell of your table and want to add a new row to the end of your table, all you have to do is press the Tab key. But what if you want to add a new row in the middle of your table, or you want to add a new column? Just hover your mouse over the border between the cells where you'd like to place your new row or column, and click the plus sign. Voila! There's your new row or column. If you'd like to learn more about tables, I've got several lessons dedicated to tables within my basic Word Skills for Legal Professionals course. In those lessons, I show you not only how to create tables, but how to make them a useful tool within your documents, sorting rows, controlling formatting, resizing table rows and columns, plus when you should use tables versus columns for displaying text side by side. Check out a sample lesson in the course now by clicking the link above or in the description below.